there we go okay guys so we're going to be doing our butterfly award i hope you like my butterflies they're very magical oh yes we do yes we do <laughs> Well, at least, uh, at least I hope. Let me just ask everybody who's watching, do you love your butterflies? If you do, make sure you write yes. We would love to know, Pam, how many people uh, love butterflies. So, Absolutely. wow, well, uh, the answers, oh, we have a lot of people who love butterflies. Nevertheless, we had a one person who said, no, I don't love butterflies. <laughs> And so, and so it's understandable. We will not judge you at all. Hmm. So many are saying, yes, Pam, we love butterflies. Brilliant. Okay, then I'll continue. So, good question for you now, because um, it's that time of year where you should be seeing lots of butterflies. So, how many butterflies have you seen this week? And where did you see them? Put your comments in the comments box for me. How many butterflies have you seen this week? And where did you see them? That's important. And okay. so, so yeah, please do share that with us. We would love to know uh, where, uh, you know, how many do you see? Okay, uh, somebody see uh, three or four uh, outside. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody said uh, one, uh, three, somebody said uh, uh, none. There was, there was oh. quite a few, there is a quite a few who haven't seen any, by the way. Mm. Uh, so, uh, so it is, a, that is a little bit worrying, but on the other hand, mm -hmm. I would say the average number would be about three, two, three butterflies. Um, okay. And if it's possible, yeah. So people mentioned, they said that they saw it in the garden. Uh, somebody was close to the woods. Uh, so that, that's, that's, uh, that's what we would say. And when it comes to uh, Facebook Live, uh, let me make, we need to wait a little bit longer because it's about nine seconds delay between these two mm -hmm. platforms. Uh, okay. So uh, we are looking now at the moment. Uh, so, um, uh, so somebody saw one in their home. Somebody saw six butterflies. Uh, 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 and so uh, the answers are coming. The, the, but the sad thing is there's a, quite a few answers which said we saw zero butterflies. Okay. So I would say average is approximately about two to three butterflies. Okay. All right. Well, well, we'll travel on now. Otherwise, we'll get stuck. Okay, guys. Thank you for that. So here's what we need to do for the butterfly honor. Okay. So we have to learn how butterflies live and eat. Collect some pictures, stickers, or photos of butterflies in your area. Discuss and draw the life cycle of a butterfly, which is very exciting. Memorize John 3 verse 7, which is the story of Nicodemus. Um, make some art. That's the, that's the brilliant part. And don't forget, when you've made your art, you have to send it in to Diane. And learn about a butterfly song. Okay, so that's our, um, what we're going to do. And it should be, if you've downloaded a workbook, um, or you've downloaded the and spec for it then it'll be there okay guys so here we go so how do butterflies live and eat would anyone like to answer that one for me or shall oh, i move on let's figure out uh, we're going to unlock the chat again uh, in the okay. zoom room. for everybody who is on the comment section uh, on facebook mm -hmm. live just please put a comment there uh, so everybody <clears throat> can now type again what, what happened pam is sometimes we mute the chat because uh -huh. uh, because of the uh, it sometimes becomes a little bit too much of commenting going on so here it is we are looking for the answers how do they eat and uh, and uh, uh, okay here it is okay some people say i don't know uh -huh. uh, many say i or they feed on plants uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> they use their tongue uh, okay. oh somebody says the food is nectar for, on the flowers uh -huh. uh, okay uh, uh, okay, some people think they're pollinators, uh, so I guess, uh, they, okay, they eat a uh, plant's uh, sap. Okay, oh, somebody said, oh, they're eating leaves. Pam, you will need okay. to tell us if that's true or not All true. Right. And many other answers, so let's hear from you, Pam. Right. Okay, we'll, we'll carry on then, because, whoop, there's my butterfly again. Lots of people know lots of bits and pieces. Okay, so butterflies live a lot of their lives flying around in the air, which is where you'll see them with their flitting about. They're looking for food. Um, you're quite right, they do pollinate flowers. They live around flowers that they eat the nectar from. So each butterfly has its own particular flower or flowers that they go to. And they'll often live on that plant for most of their life. But we'll find out more about it at the moment. Okay, so you were right there. Now here's some pictures um, of the things that butterflies like. Now they love Buddleia and Buddleia is called the butterfly plant. 
um, verbena, lavender, honeysuckle, because it's got that lovely fragrance, okay, and catmint. Um, sometimes people put out pieces of fruit um, for the butterflies. You can put a saucer out, which might attract them, okay, because they love the sweetness. Um, and they need the nectar to give them energy, a bit like your food when you have your breakfast in the morning. It gives them the energy so that they can fly around. So if you plant your flowers and you want to attract butterflies, butterflies like warmth, so your plants must be in a nice sunny place. Sometimes you might see butterflies just sort of flitting around each other. And these are the male butterflies and they circle around and they're usually defending their territories. So how does a butterfly get its food from plants? Somebody did sort of answer that one, but what they have, somebody said it's a tongue. It's actually called a proboscis, a proboscis. And they shoot it down like a straw and they <laughs> the nectar out. A bit like when you have, you know, when you want to get in the bottom of your milkshake and you're really, <laughs> okay, that's what the butterflies do. Okay, so it's called a proboscis and it enables the butterfly to get right down in the flower and get that nectar right in from the bottom. A bit like, um, um, what's the, the, the bird, the hummingbird, a bit like the hummingbird. Okay, they do the same sort of thing. So when it's not being used, it rolls up. If you ever had one of those, um, sometimes it parties, they have those party blowers and you blow them out and it goes long and then it rolls back in again. Okay, so that's what happens when it's not using it, it puts it away and then it can fly around. So that's the answer to the question, okay, how they eat. So, oh, I've moved on the slide. Was that okay for everyone? I've, I hope everyone's been able to take some notes and uh, yes, look in yes. the book. Uh, so for everybody who is uh, watching this, we just want to remind you the worksheet is ready for you. And in case, in case you uh, don't have it, you can download it from our page. Uh, on the other hand, uh, that link is posted as well on Facebook Live uh, pinned so you can very easily see it. And if, you don't ha uh, if you're not able to print it straight away, I'll just take a note on a piece of paper. Uh, that is good enough. And, uh, and, and that will probably bring you uh, to the end of this honor award and you'll be able to get it. Okay, right. So number two then, um, you're asked to collect pictures, stickers or photos of butterflies that live in your area. Now if you're in Britain, you can go to um, www.wildlifetrusts.org and you can find out all sorts of information. You can get pictures to help you identify your butterflies or if you've got a printer and you're able you can print them off and you can put them into your um book okay if you live in another country obviously you're going to have to look at see what um butterflies live in your area and in your particular country and we would love to see the pictures of them as well if you see mm. them so so yeah just because this is being told by british union conference and we do focus mainly on the on the nature here we would love to see your part of the world as well so please share with us Absolutely, because there are there, there are um, so many species of butterfly and moth um, through the world. Some of them are indigenous, which means they only live in that country, and some of them um, mi migrate. There is one butterfly that migrates. Um, so perhaps you could find out what that one is. So one of our first British butterflies up in the corner there is actually um, called a holly blue. And then we have a peacock. We have um, a Red Admiral. This one is a fritillary. Now there are lots of different types of fritillary and I couldn't quite pin which one it was, but it's a fritillary. Then we have our small tortoiseshell and there's a large tortoiseshell as well. And then we have the big white one which when I was a child we used to call it a cabbage butterfly because it always landed on our cabbages and my mum used to send me out to chase them away because they used to eat the cabbage leaves. Um, and then the last one is the swallowtail. Now you might or might not see some of these because the, some of them live in woodland, some of them live in our gardens, some of them live on heathland, um, some of them like the wet, some of them like the dry. So they're all in different places. So that's another thing you need to find out is where your butterfly actually likes to be. Okay, for our butterflies. So there's a few for you. You can go and find um, on the website. You might be able to identify the particular butterfly that you've seen in your garden because um, there are lots and lots of different ones. And like the fritillary, sometimes there are some that are called that, but they're slightly different. 
Okay, so you need to look at those carefully. Okay, so let's have a look. Now, one of the things we can look at is, don't if anyone's, has anyone, I'm gonna ask a question and perhaps we might get a response. Has anyone actually heard of the big butterfly count? Uh, so, so if you did hear about big butterfly uh, uh, count, uh, just put it um, uh, in the comments, yes or no. Mm -hmm. That way is we're gonna know, uh, so did you hear about this? Uh, yeah, well, at the moment is a majority no. Uh, okay. So, yeah, uh, yeah, no, 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 majority people say only about one or two people that I saw knew about this. And when it comes to uh, Facebook, let's just have a look at what people are saying on the Facebook. Uh, so, uh, because they're a few seconds late. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, some people, uh, some people did hear about it. Uh, uh, but again, majority of people all across platforms is no. Yeah. Okay, so the big butterfly count is a bit like every year the RSPB do a bird count, okay, because they want to understand what's happening to and where they're going. When I was a little girl, um, I lived across from a, actually a chicken farm and the hedge was a big hawthorn hedge and every spring summer I'd be able to go over and I'd find hundreds and hundreds, perhaps thousands of caterpillars. If I went to that same hedgerow now, I probably wouldn't see as many. And the other thing, um, not far from where I lived was um, an RAF station and they had like old huts and outside the old huts were the buddleia bushes, which I told you about earlier. And there used to be hundreds of different butterflies around that bush. But unfortunately now you don't see so many. So part of the big butterfly count is for conservation. They want to know where we find butterflies and how many, because it helps for conservation. Okay, and on the bottom there, you've got the www.bigbutterflycount.org. So you can go to the website, okay, and you can do some reporting on there and it'll give you statistics about um, all the different butterflies, which is very important. Yes, and, and especially important because quite a few people saw us, uh, wrote down that they haven't seen any butterflies this week. And you need to know as well, I didn't see any butterflies this week as well. I saw one caterpillar, uh, but um, but I, I didn't see uh, any butterflies. So if you would like to, uh, to help in, in, in preservation and also in this count, make sure you report your findings on this website. Okay. So there's a bit, some facts here that they found out about butterflies. The, the population of butterflies in the UK, I'm not sure about in other countries, although I'm sure it's probably quite true, they're actually declining because of climate change. Um, because man is um, tearing up the countryside and building houses. Um, people are living in apartments so they don't have gardens. Um, but butterflies really love the sun. And in the UK, because we're sort of on the northern edge, we don't get as much sun. Um, and the forecasts have said that things are changing. So obviously it changes the habitat of the butterfly as well. So we need to, be, we need to think how can we help um, our environment and our wildlife Okay, so if you go to that website, it'll give you some ideas of what we can do. So, another question then, because you need to think, okay? The idea behind doing it is you need to think about things too. So how can we help? What can we do for our butterfly population? What can we do in our own way? Yeah, well, let's ask, let's ask our amazing adventurers. Uh, what will be your suggestion? Uh, what we can do about... Um, helping our butterfly uh, population. So, so any suggestions coming in? Uh, no, uh, Pam, uh, no, I don't think, I don't see any uh, comments. Oh, uh, well, uh, here it is. The first one comment which came in was, uh, we need more woods, uh, we need more flowers. Uh, okay, let me just, let me just see. Uh, we're waiting now for the comments from Facebook as well. Uh, so, um, yeah, plant flowers. People are saying that more water. Um, uh, people are even suggesting bug hotels. Also, mm -hmm. making sure we take care of them. Uh, somebody's saying we need to feed them, but I actually don't know how we can feed them. Uh, no. So uh, they are just saying, well, listen, guys, we need to just take care of nature mainly. Okay, because God was a great creator. He created the environment for us to take care of. He put Adam and Eve in the garden. He said, look after it for me. And I think sometimes we forget that we have to look after what we still have. So we need to look after everything. So here are some, some ideas for you. Um, 
they, they do like flowers. They do lot, lots of flowers and each butterfly has its own flower. Okay, so you can plant things like lavender, honeysuckle, catmint, verbena. Okay, so even if you've only got a few pots on a windowsill or on a balcony, you can still attract butterflies by providing those things, okay, and looking after them. It's very important for them to have somewhere to go. And you can also, I've seen it on Facebook, there's, I think it's the um, National Trust or one of those, I can't remember the exact one, you can get, um, it's called a bee bomb, but you can use it for butterflies as well because it's the same purpose. You can actually get a package of seeds that the wildflowers that you can just throw into a corner of your garden, okay, and it will put in all those sorts of flowers um, that the butterflies and bees are attracted to, okay, so you can do your little bit in your corner. So we thought about what they um, eat. Now we're going to look at the, the life cycle of the butterfly because this is one of the really exciting things about butterflies because they do something which is called metamorphosis. Big word. Okay, and it says discuss and draw. If you've got a workbook, in the workbook there is um, a page there where you can write down or you can draw. Um, there's also um, a little bit in there that you can use um, to illustrate this. Okay, so we're going to look at the life cycle of our butterfly now. So in the beginning, one of my favourite stories is the very hungry caterpillar. I'm sure everybody um, in the British Isles may have come across it. If you haven't, if you're in another country, it's one of the um, favourites of young children in this yeah. country. <laughs> Let's see who knows the story, guys. Do, yeah. you know, do you know the story of the big, of the very uh, hungry caterpillar? Anyway, yeah, 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 I can see. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. In my household, my kids know this story as well. Yes. <laughs> okay. So it all begins with a very small egg laid on a leaf. Now it could be one single egg, it could be a cluster of eggs, and each butterfly has a specific shape to their egg. Okay. So that's how the story begins in The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Then, okay, one day the egg splits open. Okay, and the caterpillar emerges from its shell. Now, the first food that the caterpillar actually has is to eat the shell that it just came out of, which is quite good because then there's no trace of it left behind for any predators. So when the caterpillar comes out, it moves off and it has a good munch on the leaves of the plant on which the egg is laid. And remember, each butterfly likes a particular plant, so its eggs will be laid on that plant for the caterpillar to eat. So there we go. This is actually the caterpillar of the monarch butterfly. Um, and that's one of the butterflies that I said that actually migrates. OK, it's quite distinctive. Now, caterpillars have colours on them that are warning to birds. So if a bird saw this caterpillar with its yellow and black, it usually means it's poisonous, like snakes. Hey, Pam, so that... as, you, as you mentioned that, you also mentioned that uh, a bee bomb which is there to help uh, pollinators. And uh, so, so Natalie was uh, so quick on this, then we, we, found, we, found the, we found the link for that. Uh, so, uh, so are we gonna just share that with everybody in the, in the comment section for everybody. So in case you're interested in having that bee bomb, make sure you go to this link. Brilliant, that's, that's really helpful. It means we can all start doing something, okay, very soon because we need to, we need to grow places for, and habitats for our, our, um, our caterpillars and our bees and all our bugs that are out there. Okay, so the caterpillar moves off and it munches away. And I've got a fact here for you. A caterpillar eats so much, okay, I'm going to read this from here because it's a fact, that it can grow up to 27 times its original weight. 27,000 times its original weight. Can you imagine if you ate your breakfast every day and you became 27,000 times bigger? Okay. Uh, it's happening to me right now during this lockdown. I'm... Uh... <laughs> I'm increasing dramatically in the weight. <laughs> okay, so that's the caterpillar. So what happens next? Once the caterpillar has grown to maturity, or it's, it's, it's as it should be, it then attaches itself to the plant that it started off on. Okay, so it's on the same plant. It doesn't move anywhere from that plant. 
if it's on a hawthorn hedge then it eats the hawthorn edge and then it builds a cocoon some people call it a pupa some people call it a chrysalis okay so it builds a little house around itself and it's completely inside then enclosed and um, its shell hardens and it hangs there now uh, some caterpillars will come out within one or two days some might be two weeks some caterpillars even stay in for years at a time until the conditions are right for it to come out okay so if you've ever watched one it may take some time you can actually buy kits um, where you can take they i think they send you i can't remember we did it's called they send you the chrysalis you attach the chrysalis in your um, net on some leaves and you can watch the butterfly emerge okay i think you can get them from um the the nets come from baker ross if anyone's interested and then they send you the link to get the actual caterpillars okay so you can get a, a whole kit baker ross do the net and they give you the link so you can have your own caterpillars watch them but when they become butterflies then you let them go okay and then when the chrysalis hangs on the plant for quite a while you can see now the butterfly emerging it takes a while to come out and as it comes out the actual um, butterfly is quite soft okay it has to wait for a while for the sun to come and you'll see it spread its wings and as it spreads its wings and it gets the heat it pumps blood through its wings and then the wings stiffen and then it's ready to fly away so it doesn't fly away straight away it has to warm up in the sun so you think that's a bit like us when we pray um we put our hands together but if you do this okay we can make a butterfly so remember when we pray okay we're we're also like the butterfly when we pray to god we're asking for him to give us some warmth to pump us up with energy and then to go off and do the things that he wants us to do so we can be a bit like a butterfly in that in that way okay so then the adult butterfly spreads its wings it catches the warmth of the sun okay so you'll see it sat on a flower and quite often the the wings um will flap like this as it tries to catch the heat and it'll stay there for a while before it flies off um, and then of course uh, somebody's, asking, somebody's asking a question about what is the uh, life span of a uh, how how, do, how long do they live um they don't live very long I mean, you, you hardly see, what will happen sometimes is, um, I've sometimes gone into my shed in the autumn and I found a butterfly just hanging from the ceiling. They will, um, like a hedgehog, they'll go to sleep in the winter and they'll come out again. The, the, they have different lifespans, okay? So perhaps it's something you could find about, when you find out about your butterfly, see if you can find out the lifespan of your particular butterfly, okay? So I don't know the exact answer to that because it's a bit like, um, when they're coming out of the egg it takes them different lengths of time okay somebody said uh, on a facebook chat that whatever happens when you see butterfly don't touch their wings and i know the, the, the butterfly's wings are very delicate they're made up of very tiny little scales uh, you know if you've seen roof tiles that fit into each other they have scales on their wings so they're sort of covered in a powder if you touch their wings you take off the powder which is uh, which helps keep them safe so it's a bit like a coating so yeah you have to be there um if you've ever seen a professional in in the um in the butterfly house pick up butterflies they usually wait till their wings are closed up then they gently pick them up but please don't pick up the butterflies <laughs> we don't want to damage them okay so that's the life cycle and as it's a cycle what happens all right And off it goes again. So caterpillar, uh, butterfly, egg. Then we've got the caterpillar who munches, goes into a pupa. Butterfly, egg, caterpillar, munch, munch, chrysalis, butterfly, egg. Okay, so it go, it just goes round and round. It's a bit like um um how 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 the Godhead operates. Okay, so you had God who created the earth. He had Jesus, his son. He also has the Holy Spirit and all of them together combine, okay, in our lives as a Christian. Okay, guys. So we're going to move on, okay. So 
Number four, it asks us to memorize um, John 3, verse 7. If you've got a Bible there, you could probably look at it. Okay, and John 3, um, verse 7 says, Do not marvel that I said to you that you must be born again. Okay, so it's a bit like a butterfly being born again. But the person who asked this was a man called Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was a Pharisee. And um, like a lot of people at the time, they were a bit confused about what Jesus was trying to tell them. Um, and he said, do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. You just have to accept. So the man was a Pharisee named Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews and he wanted to know how he could be born again. So here we are. In the Bible, it tells us the story of Nicodemus talking to Jesus. And Jesus was trying to explain to him and it's a bit like a butterfly. A butterfly is born again. It lays its egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, out it comes, and butterfly. But what Jesus was trying to tell him was, you don't actually curl up in a ball and go back into your mum's tum. To be born again is when we have baptism. Okay, you go under the water and you come back out and you're changed because your life has changed because you've accepted Jesus and God as the father and that was, that's what he was trying to tell Nicodemus it was very difficult for people to understand what it meant okay so to be born again means to accept Jesus understand what he's telling you and then we have baptism which is our public display of being born again okay so you can go over that story with your adult because you need to be able to retell that story to someone else okay so you need to look at your bibles for that one Okay, so we've got quite a way on now. I don't know if anyone's got any questions at this point before we go on. Yes, we, uh, we do have some questions. Um, somebody said, what about the green ones? Are they poisonous as well when it comes to caterpillars? You mean the green caterpillar or the green butterfly? Yeah, well, um, uh, I actually am not 100% uh, clear on that. So uh, what about caterpillar first? Okay, green caterpillars normally get eaten by birds. Um, they're normally the sort of everyday type of caterpillar. But some of the bigger ones, which are the, like the hawk moth caterpillars, are quite bright um, because they don't want birds um, to come and eat them. So if a bird sees a brightly coloured um, caterpillar, probably leave it alone. They're not exactly poisonous. The ones that are poisonous to us are the hairy ones. Okay, if you find a hairy caterpillar, they're usually hairy for a reason because in their little hairs um, are irritants. Now it won't kill us, but it could bring you out in a rash. Okay. Or if you have an allergy, um, it could be a lot worse, but no, not normally for us. They're not really that poisonous for us. Okay. All right. Okay. So, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming uh, Pam that they are not, uh, poisonous butterflies. Are there any poisonous butterfl butterflies? Not as far as I know, no. I think they're too beautiful to be poisonous, but then <laughs> some snakes are very beautiful and are poisonous. But no, I don't think they're any, not, not that I know of, unless somebody else can find out and wants to um, yeah, put that, that on, the, on the site and let us know, that would be very interesting. So, but no, I don't know of any poisonous ones. We don't particularly have many poisonous things in this country for some reason. That's right. It's because we're all a bit namby-pamby, I think. Also, for everybody else who is watching this, if you do have any questions for Pam, just make sure that you put it in the chat room or, or comments. And make sure your discussion is in the direction of Adventure World Butterflies. So, so help us with that. Excellent. Okay. So, number five. As I said, whoop, this is my favourite bit. Because I'm a creative person, this is what I don't know if you notice my background with my butterflies, and I'm wearing a butterfly t shirt. So the favourite bit now, this is the bit where you can go and do something, be artistic, be creative, because God made us creative beings. He wants us to, to express things. So, right, so you've got to make one of the following crafts. You can make all of them if you want. Okay, so a butterfly on the pavement with chalk. Okay, some people like to, to do chalk. If you do that, please take a photograph of it. Don't just leave it there. It's nice to share with your neighbours, actually. Uh, a torn construction paper picture of a butterfly. So you can 
make the shape of a butterfly and stick bits on. A butterfly in the sand or earth. It did say sand or snow, but I thought snow's not really this time of year. So in the sand or the earth, again, take a photo of it, okay? Um, a butterfly mobile. So that's something that hangs, um, hangs down, which might be good to hang in the window to share with everyone else. Um, a butterfly magnet, a butterfly made with beads, or a butterfly made of coloured tissue paper clipped together with a clothes peg. Okay, you could also use um, kitchen paper as another good thing. If you've got kitchen paper handy, if you use your, um, your fibre pens on it, it will emerge into the kitchen paper. Um, you could use newspaper, um, pieces out of magazines. You could tear that up and use that if you haven't got any um, coloured paper. Be, be, be inventive, be creative with what you've got. I'm just going to show you in the next slide then. Uh, Pam, uh, before you go there, if that's right, let me just ask you questions before you show some of the crafts, if that's right. Uh, there is a lot of questions again coming back. So uh, are people asking, so are the all butterflies coming from the eggs? Is that, is that what? Uh, yeah, that's how, that's how butterflies are. That, so, that's... so in case you missed that part, this is going to be also available on YouTube. You can watch it again. Uh, so that's what it is. People are asking, are there any pink butterflies? Pink ones. Yes. I've not seen a pink one. Butterflies tend to be um, more on the the um, what's the colours I'm thinking of? Like reds and blues, browns. Quite often, it's to match their environment because uh -huh. they some some of them. And I'm going into moths now, but moths are slightly different. Some I know with moths, they sometimes they can be their colours will match what they land on. So if it wants to hide on the bark of a tree, it will be brown. Oh. Um, but, but butterflies are different. They usually like to display their colours, but I've not seen a pink one. All right. Uh, somebody did find it on, online and mentioned that there's no butterflies which are poisonous, but there are some okay. moths, uh, moths which are quite poisonous in Africa. Mm. We, yeah. Uh, so so that is, that, that's a very good comment. Thank you so much for that. Mm. Uh, yeah. uh, somebody asked the question, Pam, the, the butterfly which was on mm. your PowerPoint presentation, is that a particular butterfly or is that just a beautiful animation? Well, the orange one, as I said, is the, oh, I've forgotten the name of it now. My head's gone. Um, they, they are butterflies, yes. All right. But don't, ask, don't ask me to name them. <laughs> uh, but on the other hand, uh, the one which was standing in a corner, which flew off as animation, that is just animation. That's probably not yeah. the one we can find in the nature. No, that, they were animations. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not good enough to do an animation on a... Uh, somebody on a asked a question time as well before we see the uh, crafts. Uh, is uh, is uh, are, are, are butterflies able to travel on a long destinations? Yeah, the, I did. I did mention the one butterfly that does. Um, it migrates, but it, the name's gone out of my head at the moment. I'll think of it in a minute. Okay. But it's the one. It's the butterfly that is in the presentation with the life cycle. Monarch, the monarch butterfly. Okay. It it does migrate. They usually cluster together in large groups as well. If you go to um, National Geographic's. You can see the monarch butterfly on there and it'll show you um, where they live and where they go to. But they, they can appear in a great big cloud. Okay, all right. So there are some which can travel a very long distances. Okay, let's see some of the craft, Pam. Okay, so you can use um, lolly sticks um, with beads. Um, that one I think is tissue paper and um, pipe cleaners. Some of you may not have these things, don't worry about it. You'll see other things you can do. Okay, this is tissue paper, but you could do the same, as I said, with kitchen paper. If you have a piece of kitchen paper, fold it up like a fan and bind it with um, a pipe cleaner. If you haven't got a pipe cleaner, you can use um, a cable tie or a piece of a wire, um, garden wire, anything you've got, be creative, okay? Um, this one's a cutout. And it's done like a stained glass window with pieces of um, tissue paper. Again, a piece of um, lace on a peg. That's a peg there for the body. Pegs are quite good. And you can decorate the peg. Okay, again, you could use um, tissue paper. You could use any fabrics you like. You could use the kitchen paper, newspaper, um, paper cut of magazines. Okay, anything you've got to hand. Um, this one is a beaded one, but the bits on the side are the cut, are cut off pieces of toilet roll. Okay, so you can use a toilet roll, you can cut it up and make smaller pieces and shape it, or you can use the toilet roll. Okay, and 
The last one is um, a mobile. So again, you can use, if, you're, if your adults have any packages arriving, you can use the um, corrugated cardboard or use some cereal packets, even cut pieces off cereal packets, colour it in, or just use the decoration of the, the cereal packet for your colouring. Okay, so anything you can find around the house. So the next pictures are a little bit more inventive for people who haven't got all those things. Okay, you could use anything you find around the house. Okay, so we've got some forks, a uh, TV remote, um, some overturned dishes, anything you can find, pine cones, wooden spoons, uh, I think someone's put some fruits in there, um, aerosol cans, pens, be creative and again, take a photograph of what you've done and send it in because we'd love to see any art, anything you can think of, if you find twigs in the garden, um, flower heads that have dropped off, please don't pick the flowers, blades of grass, stones, um, pebbles, glass beads, anything you can find, you can build a picture. Pasta, okay, pasta is quite good for making pictures with, um, dried beans, dried peas, okay, be creative in the way that you present something. So it says you only have to make one of those things, but if you want to make more, then fine, okay, so I hope um, we've got lots of ideas there. Has it helped everyone? Yes, yes, these are excellent ideas. And yeah, make sure you do it and do it as soon as you can because we would love to share them on Wednesday. So these are excellent, dear Pam. Uh, did you make any of these yourself? Um, I have done. These ones aren't my particular ones, but I have done in the past. I, if I go on a walk with the grandchildren, we sometimes pick up things and make pictures and do things. Another of my favourites is if you fold a piece of paper, put some paint on it, put a piece of string inside, curled up, Hold it together really tight and then pull the string out and open it up and uh, you'll have a lovely picture of a butterfly Beautiful. or blots. Yeah, lots of different ways you can think of. Be really, really inventive. Okay, so that's all our artwork, which I'm really looking forward to. I've been looking at some on Facebook that people have done for other um, awards and it's really good. We want everybody to be engaged and to really get, get doing things. Okay, so said we'd really love to see your butterfly art please share it with us and we said again here's the link that you can send it to okay we really want to see those the last one then we've got on here we're coming to close is to learn a butterfly song does anyone know a butterfly song hmm okay let's let's ask people for the comment uh, uh everybody okay what is do you know guys the butterfly song Let's have a look. Uh, yep, yeah, somebody knows. No, somebody doesn't know. Uh, so, <laughs> so again, Pam. Uh, uh, it, well, majority. It, well, I would say <laughs> it's fifty-fifty, Pam. Because mm. most people know that if I were a butterfly, I thank you, God, for giving me wings. If I were a robin in the tree, I thank you, God, that I could sing. Okay, most people know that one which is quite good. So you, you can share that with, with your adult and your friends. Okay, that's one. I have got a link on here and looking at the time, could I go to the link and play them the, the one I found on YouTube or not? Uh, uh, Pam, uh, uh, is it link in your PowerPoint presentation? Yes, it is. Well, then you just need to click on the link, I guess. Okay. Let's so have a go. It's, I think it's this one here. Let's have a go. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Let's see. It doesn't, we're going to go with your own version. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Sorry, forget the first bit. It's an advert. Right, let's skip that. There we go. Butterfly, butterfly, you're so fine. Flying up and down all through the sky. The life cycle just goes on and on. Now listen up to my butterfly song. Is that a song, Pam? Yep. My life cycle goes like this. Four unique stages of metamorphosis. Stage one is the egg on a leaf just growing inside. Chilling in that tree. Stage two is the caterpillar. That's the larva. Eating that leaf and growing even larger. Molting. He climbs right out of his skin. 
again. Crawling around all through the spring stage free is the chrysalis. That's the cocoon. Changing inside almost a butterfly soon. So call this the pupa. It's a funny name. Check out what this caterpillar became. Stage four. Here come. Oh. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, so bright. Many people don't know this song, Pam, and uh, and uh, and uh, so uh, I think that the best song for us would be the first choice, which you just shared with us. Uh, uh, it, it, so it, so maybe would you mind singing that song for once uh, for us again? Uh, if you have a butterfly. It's quite funky. <laughs> yes, it is, and some people are saying it is for sure. Uh, so we know we don't we didn't know about that song Pam, but we we knew the first one you shared yeah okay uh, so but you can go to that link and you can uh, have a listen All right. it shows, i like it because it um it shows the whole of the 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 butterfly and it talks about the metamorphosis and it gives each one there's another link down there for another one but i won't do that one maybe all right uh, so uh, Pam, uh, Pam, uh, all together all together, uh, would you be able to summarize for us the Adventure Awards? Okay, so here we go. So we've looked at how butterflies live and eat. Okay, so we talked about the flowers and the nectar, its proboscis, and how it goes from different flowers. And it'll often eat um, rotten fruit as well because of the sugars in it. So you could put out a plate with fruits on it. Um, you need to collect some stickers photos of those butterflies that live in your particular area okay and discuss and draw the life cycle of the butterfly as i say if you've got the workbook it's in there if not you can go to the wildlife um, um that's relevant to where you are and what country you're in to find some resources memorize john 3 verse 7 okay where about nicodemus who asked jesus about being born again and uh, he went through and told him so being born again, what does that mean? So you need to look at that with your adult, okay, and talk about it and discuss it with them. And then we've got our wonderful art bits that you can do, making a butterfly on the pavement with chalk. Don't forget to take a photo, a torn construction paper, a butterfly in the sand or the earth, a mobile, which is quite good because you could hang it in your window. It's a bit like we've been doing with our rainbows for people. You could hang it in the window and share it with people. Um, a butterfly magnet. A butterfly made with beads or you could be inventive and perhaps use buttons if you've got some old buttons um, a butterfly made of colored tissue clipped together with a clothes peg and learn a song about butterflies okay so you might find something else to do with a butterfly I quite like that one that I've given you because it's uh, quite funky okay so all those things um, we've been through so I hope that you've been able to note those down and uh, work with those so that's what we did today. So you've done quite a lot. You should be pleased with yourself. And I'm very really happy that uh, everyone's been here to join in. Okay. Excellent. And don't forget, take a photo of your art and send it in to Dayan. Okay. Excellent. We really want to see it because it's good to share. Thank you, Pam. Thank you so much for this beautiful presentation. Uh...